I remember when I was shooting a television show called Flipside, and I kept getting notes every week. Probably written by Gene Simmons, they were handwritten, and they included backstage passes to see Kiss, whoever Kiss was. Well, after I finished shooting the 13 weeks of the show, I decided maybe I'd have more fun in the music business. So I decided to go see this group, Kiss. And one night, an advertising executive and myself traveled over to the Diplomat Hotel. Yes, the famous Diplomat, kind of a rundown hotel. We worked our way around the holes and sat down in the front row. Well, this was different, all right. Kiss came out. They had black jeans on, a few studs, had some firelights, and some smoke. They used smoke even then. Well, we listened to this group called KISS with their partial makeup. They didn't have all the makeup yet, but they had part of it. And said, well, this is certainly different. They are certainly performers. They definitely were performers. And next to me was a young girl screaming and hollering and telling me how great they were. They're wonderful. Oh, you've got to sign them. This group is great. They're my favorite. I found out later it was Peter's sister. But in any case, I left that night after speaking to Paul and Jean and told them we should get together in a week or so and discuss their career. A few days later, they came up to my office and we discussed what we could do. I said, you know, why don't you give me a chance? At least give me 30 days. I'll see if I can get you a record deal and then we can decide whether we're going to stay together or not. They agreed. And within those 30 days, I had talked to Neil Bogart. Neil Bogart had done one of my television shows. And I knew him pretty well, and I also knew he was leaving Buddha Records to start a new record company, soon to be called Casablanca. So Neil was looking for talent. I said I saw a unique band, a little over the top, wore makeup, but they were very persistent, very exciting, and I thought it could work. Neil said, well, do you have any tapes? I said, well, I'll get get you a demo and see what you think. Sure enough, they brought a demo to the office. The demo was done by Eddie Kramer. Very good demo. Had a lot of good songs, songs that all of you know, like Firehouse and Strutter and Black Diamond. Anyway, I brought it to to Neil, and Neil gave it to a couple of his producers. The two producers at at Buddha then were Kenny Kerner and Richie Wise, and they had recorded a number of hits for him at Buddha, and they were going to travel to L.A. to be part of the new record label, the new record label called Casablanca. Anyway, he brought it to them, and he said, look it, what do you think? If you like them, I think we'll sign this group. Well, both Richie and Kenny were rock and rollers and and loved the idea of recording a rock and roll band, even though they didn't know about the makeup and what crazies they were. Well, eventually, Neil said they would sign them. I told the guys, and within 30 days, we had a record deal, and we proceeded to do the album. When we were signed to Casablanca, Casablanca was backed by Warner Brothers Records. And when they first got a load of what Neil had signed, i.e. the KISS band with the makeup, they weren't really sure. In fact, they were positive that KISS wouldn't make it. So after the album was done, there was a memo passed around Warner Brothers that maybe they shouldn't quite think about working this band. After all, how could a band with makeup make it? And they'd probably be gone soon. So just avoid working the band. Well, this memo got in the hands of Neil Bogart, one of, his, one of his friends at Warner's tipped him off, and he went crazy. He just didn't like that at all. How dare they go against him? So he had a meeting with the executives at Warner's and said, look, it, how can you work against me on this new label? They said, look, it, Neil, I don't, we don't, really don't believe that this KISS group can make it. Why don't you just look for some other artist? Neil said no, but he did call me one night before he made his final decision to leave Warners and said, look, it, Warners does not want the group with makeup. Do you think you'd go and ask them if they would take their makeup off? I told Neil I didn't think so, but I had a meeting with the group and told him what was happening, and we all agreed that we couldn't possibly do it. Called back Neil and said, Neil, look, it, we're not going to take off the makeup. Neil then proceeded talking to Warner Brothers about whether or not... he. They would go along with the KISS project. They said they didn't feel it was right, and Neil said, would you let me out of my contract? They worked out a deal to let Neil out of his contract. There was only one problem, though. There wasn't any money. That was a real problem. Neil had to mortgage his home just to keep the company going. And this is where this famous American Express story comes in. Seeing there was no money, I decided to put the tour on my American Express card. Well, I wasn't used to putting any more than about $100 on my American Express card, and in one month it was $25,000. I can still remember the call. Mr. O'Coin, do you think you're going to pay this? You seem to have used your American Express card quite a lot this month. Oh, of course, I said. Well, 
of course I couldn't. But fortunately, they allowed me to pay it over a period of months. And we finally got through the tour and finally got more money into the company. One of the scariest things that happened happened with the first show the KISS did for Casablanca and O'Coin Management. It was at the Academy of Music. Well, we had put the show together and we had pyrotechnics, we had a candelabra, Gene was spitting fire, we had smoke, and we also had little balls of flash paper, which Gene would go to the candelabra and then throw up in the air and they would just light and explode in the air. Well, the first night Gene was so nervous that when he took the flash paper, instead of throwing it up in the air, he threw it into the audience. And oh my gosh, it hit one of the guys sitting in the first row. A real rock and roller, but he was singed. This was rather scary. We thought he might have been terribly hurt or burned. Uh, We thought maybe it might have been the end of their career, not the beginning of the career. He turned out to be a true rock and roller, and from that point on, he got free tickets to all the KISS shows. Hi, this is Allison Steele. Come on in, sit down, relax, and make yourself at home. We'll have some tea and conversation for the next few minutes in the tea house. And visiting with me in the tea house today are a rather unusual duet of gentlemen. Um, they are from a brand new group called KISS, and they, they haven't come in dungarees. They've come in the most extraordinary outfits. And tell me about these outfits, Jean. They're pretty much extensions of our personality. They're costumes that we've designed ourselves. And uh, if you take a look at the cover of our album, Mm -hmm. you'll really get a chance to see what we look like. That's really us. That's that's you in full makeup. (laughs) Yeah, but we'd like to think that that's the real us. We can't very well walk down the streets looking that way. No, you'd get arrested. Yes, we would. And uh, so we have to put on our alter egos. Well, then, then, uh, then I have to assume that Peter is a pussycat. Yes, he is. He certainly is. Peter's the drummer, and you're the bat. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's see, so that really has to do with my preoccupation with our flicks, mm-hmm. my my other love besides rock and roll mm-hmm. is watching old silent German expressionist. Yeah, that's, Alice, Horror flicks. that's Alice Cooper's bag, too, you know that. Yeah, we, we yeah. after the party, he and I went off into a corner and did a whole thing. Talked about Horror Flicks, oh, yeah. right. Yeah. Well, it's really exciting um, uh, to see you visually uh, with uh, all of that um, uh, makeup. The only thing that struck me was that Kiss is such a sweet, positive kind of name for a group. And then when the group gets on stage, that's not exactly the impression, either by the music or by the looks. Did you choose it because it was the antithesis? For shot value? I think it I think the word kiss can be uh, taken many different ways. I mean you can kiss someone easy, you can kiss someone really hard. Yeah, but this of course is the proverbial kiss of death. Uh huh. But the whole but but the whole thing I think with the group is that um, despite what we do on stage, although it's very aggressive, mm-hmm. it's all very positive. We don't want oh, yes. you know, we don't want to scare anybody away. We want everybody to have a good time walk out and, and get the feeling they've had their money's worth, which is really what it's all about. I mean, somebody puts out a certain amount of cash to be entertained, mm-hmm. and we try our damnedest to do it. Thanks so much, Gene and Ace, for visiting with us in the Tea House. Till next time, this is Allison Steele reminding you that anytime you're relaxing with good friends and good talk, you're in the Tea House. That's the music of an exciting new group called Just Kiss. Probably the most unique group on stage that uh, I've seen, well, since the first time I saw Alice Cooper. And now I'm not making any comparisons. Kiss is not anything like Alice, but I just use that uh, in terms of uh, of being different. And boy, they are different. And, and we have uh, 50% of Kiss in the studio. It's a half a kiss. <laughs> Peter and Paul. And I'm not going to ask you, where's Mary? <laughs> I know Mary. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Tell me, why Kiss? Why not hug or smooch or squeeze? Well, Paul came up with the name Kiss, so he could explain it better than I can. Paul, you're on. Um, It's a simple name. It's very direct. And our music tends to be very direct and right out front. And um, rather than go for a name like... um, the psychedelic swamis or something. Like that. <laughs> That's not yeah. old bear at all. That moment. Um, kiss, kiss also is usually like the start of something. Yeah. It's usually the start of something good. Yeah. You know? Yeah. A deep kiss. Good yeah. kiss. Good kiss. Well, all right. I'm pleased. And um, the concept of kiss, of course, 
just so different. And that's, you know, what I've been wanting to ask you all along. I mean, whose idea was the kind of presentation that you do? Well, we all had the idea, like, you know, when we were together, like, I always wanted to have been a group with makeup and flash and uh, to give people more than just a show. Like, like Paulie always used to say, if you want to listen to music, you go home and put on a record. But today, you got to, it's more than just listening. You got to see the music and feel it and all. And uh, I put an ad in the paper a long time ago, and I got this crazy call from the bass player, Gene. And he goes, uh, hello. I said, hi. And he goes, are you skinny? And I says, yeah, I'm all right. I'm thin. And he goes, do you have long hair? I said, yeah. Do you have a beard? I said, no. Would you like to wear makeup would you do anything would you wear a dress on stage all this insanity and i said yeah i'd do anything to make it i'll you know anything and he goes well come on down and uh, then i met gene and paul and i want to hear what the ad no was way. but i want everybody to hear another cut from the album folks this is kiss another cut from uh, a dynamite album as uh, you can judge already on hearing two cuts kiss now tell me again uh, peter what was the ad that you put in the paper that you got uh, there you know you read them in the in the paper all the time drama yeah. seeking original group willing to do anything to make it you know uh, rock and roll by my wife right. peter chris and so who answered it uh gene or paul i don't gene. know picked it up. we just we would buy the papers we were really desperate you know because gene and i knew what we wanted so we just we'd go through the paper and, and call everybody up that was listed and usually preface the call with do you have a beard you know was that the first drummer yeah the first drummer? Uh, so in other words you had the idea of doing the um, the makeup and well we, we had the idea but in order to make it work and in order to make it a group concept you had to find people who who, were into who, it. who would do it naturally without ah, being pushed I see in other words they, they really enjoyed the whole yeah thing. you know it, it, should, it should be something that had didn't have to be forced upon anybody mm -hmm. yeah who who conceived the specific makeup that you all wear each one of us in other words you all designed your own yeah did it, did it require a lot of practice and yeah and it took time right I mean, we, we didn't start off with it, it we just kept building on it like it was oh, that pussycat <laughs> oh, super on Peter and, well the of course, this is all hard to conceive when you hear it in conversation. But the uh, the guys in Kiss are made up. Not I'm not talking about uh, glitter rock or uh, transvestite stuff. I mean, just very theatrical and very interesting and exciting makeups that uh, you might see in a in a Japanese uh, uh, play. Yeah, you know? similar to that. Yes, sure. very much so. And and uh, the, of course, they all have great long hair, and it um, it's just visual just adds to the visual excitement of what the group does and while your eyes are being treated your ears are already going bananas from the sound <laughs> with everything done bill told us we were going to go out and start playing i had no concept of the country we lived in let alone the world the idea that we were going to travel to other cities i didn't have the slightest idea what these places were like i just assumed every new city would be like new york if we sometimes ended up getting Peter pinned to the ceiling when his drums elevated, or we offended a headliner because our pyro filled the venue with smoke, then so be it. We didn't compromise, and fortunately, Bill Coin seemingly had no credit limit on his American Express card because he funded the expenses of transporting and staging our show at a time when what we earned each night didn't come close to covering those costs. We drove a station wagon from town to town, staying in flea bag motels, Sean Delaney served as tour manager and did the driving. He was like a den mother, making sure nobody got lost on the field trip and managing the personalities. And of course, we had a road crew to set up and tear down our stage and effects to maintain our instruments, and it often turned out to fight with the headliners' road crews when they demanded we tone down our act since we were just the opening band. It wasn't real life, of course, and when we occasionally went home for brief stretches, we didn't see each other at all. On the road, though, we were KISS, and it was fun to be KISS. I was conscious that we were living this quaint rock and roll existence on the way to stardom, because stardom was never a question in my mind. We are going to make it. Bill set up promotional appearances at local papers, radio stations, and record shops at every possible opportunity. After a few months, we began to get a little big for our britches, moaning about having to do appearances. One afternoon, when we were supposed to get dressed and go to a record store, we decided we weren't going to show up. Fuck it. Bill was out with us at the time, and he came storming to our motel rooms, gathered us together, and yelled, Are you kidding me? We told him we didn't feel like doing it. We felt like it was a waste of time, and maybe even beneath us. 
You guys are acting like you've qualified for the Olympics or something, he scolded. You're not even contenders yet. We looked at each other and said, oh. We put on our makeup. We went to the record store. We listened to Bill, and he was almost always right. Neil's master plan was for us to follow the regional kissing contests and appear with the national winners on the Mike Douglas show. Needless to say, we weren't the show's usual fare, and we played up our strangeness. One of the other guests was a comedian, Toadie Fields, and at one point she said, Who are you supposed to be? I'm evil incarnate, I said, giving my best scowl. No, you're not, she shot right back. You can't fool me. You're probably some nice Jewish kid from Long Island. She was a trooper. I later thanked her on my solo album. I got a new rock group for you, Tony. This is their latest album, which I'm going to show the camera right here. But before we see them perform, huh? I want you to meet one of the members of this act close up. Here from KISS is Gene Simmons. <laughs> Excuse me while I spread my wings. Oh, yeah, go right ahead. That is something. Incidentally, else. he's up for adoption. <laughs> I refuse, Tony. Gene, what, what are you? I'm really just a member of KISS. How many members? Are there are four members. You know, your audience really looks appetizing. Oh, really? <laughs> are you a bat? Yes. <laughs> Actually, what I am is evil incarnate. Oh, my. I can tell he's your type, Tony. I can just tell. Is your mother watching today? I hope so. <laughs> Yes, Would it be actually, funny if under this he was just a nice Jewish boy? <laughs> <laughs> you should only know. <laughs> Where are you? I do. You can't hide the hook. <laughs> <laughs> One of the unique things about the first album uh, was was the idea that we were going to do a kissing contest. Neil had thought up a promotion that would that would be unique uh, in promoting Kiss and the name Kiss, and that was to have a kissing contest at all the major radio stations around the country. So he put up the money to promote this, uh, the, the kissing contest, and then needed something on record to promote the kissing contest and needed something to promote it on radio. Came up with the idea that, that we would do the song Kissing Time, which had been a hit record many years before, uh, of which none of us really wanted to do it, especially Kiss, who thought it was a little too popish and certainly wasn't their type of music. But Neil persisted. And we knew we had to go along with it. After all, this was the promotion of the first record that they had ever done. So we went back into the studio and cut Kissing Time. Kissing Time was promoted in every radio station across the country, along with the Kiss Contest. The Kissing Contest turned out to be very successful. We're not sure how much it promoted Kiss, but it certainly got enough Kissing Contests around the country so that the radio stations knew who Casablanca was which enabled us to, to get some airplay. But most radio stations didn't like the idea of Kiss, their songs, or their makeup. <laughs> 